Okay guys, today we're going to learn um, about some of the menu options and the user function options uh, on the Toshiba eStudio machines. Uh, we're going to be in the user functions menu, okay, and you can see down here you have a user tab and an admin tab. While you're in any of these functions, Toshiba put in a very short window to enter in your commands. So as I'm talking and as I'm going through this video, you'll probably notice that it's going to kick me back out to the main screen a couple times and then I'm going to quickly have to go back in to pick up where we left off. So I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, as this especially happens when you're in the admin tab. You have just one page here and if we go into general, you can change your language, you can reverse the display and what that means is if you turn this on it goes uh, white lettering on a black background or if you turn it off it goes to black lettering on a white and gray back background I personally like this one better uh, your display setting if you want to change your brightness you can do that and then the auto calibration uh, this is just going to just do its basic calibration and you can do it anytime you want so user functions that was general not a whole lot in there we'll hit the return button and go to the copy uh, you have your exposure settings. I always set the color exposure to manual, the black exposure to auto. Color mode I always set to black because most of my clients, uh, they're typically just printing out invoices or letterheads, things of that nature, where you're not going to use a lot of color and they don't want to waste uh, money on buying new color toners all the time. So. Keep in mind that this particular setting right here, even though it's on black, this is only going to be for the copy settings. Okay, so if we put a color document on the glass and we try to scan it, it's automatically going to default to black and white. So your, your output page will be just black and white. So keep that in mind. This has nothing to do with your print settings. If you were to print a job from your computer and it's in color, it's still going to print in color. Uh, image direction, enable, disable, I always have that enabled. That's just going to uh, make sure that the image is rotated correctly on the page. Then we'll page down. This is the bypass feed, which is on the right-hand side of, this, uh, of the machine. I always set that to plain, but this is where you would go in if you are always going to go through and um, copy thick paper or special types of paper. You can go in here and change this setting. Page down again, original modal mode for color on copy again only. I always have it as text photo, that's going to give you a pretty good picture quality and a very nice text quality. If you want a better picture quality, you can go down here and say that you want it, you want to scan it as a photo. Uh, that's going to slow down the process, but it's going to give you a better uh, depth of field on the black and white. So I always go text photo to keep the speed high, uh, and then original code, uh, original mode for black also text photo as well. Uh, and then also original mode for auto color, again text photo, and then you can also have some uh, uh, settings here for omitting blank pages. If you have a multi-page document that you're scanning, it can uh, detect blank pages and omit them. And then the auto color you can um, say, hey, I want you to err on the side of black and white versus color, or err on the side of color versus black and white. So that's the copy. Uh, the fax setting here, you can change your resolution. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, your original mode if you want to scan it fast as text or photo. Um, if we page down, um, these are just some more in depth um, settings that you can tweak and adjust and I would recommend going into the fax users guide uh, to, to look at those. Um, the scan, again color mode, I always set this to auto color because we don't want to scan color documents and then have them go to our computer in a black and white form. I always choose auto color just so it makes that distinction. Your compression low to high, you can decide what you need, I always just leave it on mid. And I always typically uh, keep it as a single-sided scan, but you can set it up if you select book. Everything that it goes through on the document feeder will scan both sides. But uh, you can always select that on an individual job basis later on. So I'm going to keep that as single. 
Rotation if you want, uh, you can do that as well, we don't need to. Preview setting, on and off, I always keep that off. Uh, again, here's your omit blank page adjustment and uh, auto color sensitivity adjustment uh, where it can err on the side of black and white or color, however you choose. Uh, image quality in black and white, on, uh, or I'm sorry, for black in auto color sensitivity. You can change it to high if you wish. Paging down, here's where you would change your resolution of your scans. I like to kick it up to 300 because that's uh, pretty average these days. Uh, grayscale resolution 300 and then black mode resolution 300 again so those are my settings that I put in the machine uh, you can obviously change those as you go e-filing uh, to be honest most of my clients don't use this e-filing they prefer scan to email so I'm not going to go over this I'll leave this uh, up to the manual if you are interested in doing something with the e-filing function Next we have a very common function that we need to talk about and this is the drawer settings. Right now you can see that this machine has three drawers. It has a high capacity tray that will only hold letter sized paper. Then it has two standard paper trays that will hold all the way up to 11 by 17. Okay, so this is where we would change the drawer settings if we were to put a different type of paper in. For example, say I wanted my middle drawer to be legal. I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to hit LG for legal. And as you can see, it changed the uh, initials over here. And say I want this top one to be ledger size. So I'm going to highlight it and hit ledger. So there. Then the only other thing we have to do is uh, go into the drawers, change the settings of the paper uh, guides, and you'll be off, off and running. Now another thing you can do is say this legal paper, say it's a little bit thicker than normal paper, it's a, just a heavier stock. What we can do is go in here and change the paper type as well. So you can change the thickness to plain is what it's going to be set at right now. Uh, but we can change thick one, thick two, thick three, which goes all the way up to 140 pound paper weight. But thick one will actually go all the way up to 90 pound. So thick one is typically all you need. And as you can see, it's also given us a little icon over here indicating that, hey, any paper that is in here needs to be thick one paper legal size. So that's very common. I'm actually going to take that off right now, but that's a very quick and easy setting that you can change. Uh, and that's about it for the paper drawers. I'm going to just change these back to what they actually are on my machine. Okay, here's your address book. Right now, uh, I've already done a factory default, uh, I'm sorry, a factory reset on this machine, so it's wiped out.